Welcome back. Cuthbert Cooks once again from Malbasha too. A little bit more basics uh, now. What we're going to do, we're going to make a little crushed potato and we're going to serve that with our braised short rib which is still in the oven. So we're coming up on uh, just over three hours of slowly braising our short ribs. And so what we're going to do, we're just going to make a quick little, um, uh, a quick little um, crushed potato. And what we've done, I've got some potatoes, some little new potatoes boiling in the back. And uh, so we started off with a little bit of uh, uh, new potatoes. Then we've started them off in cold water. Classical cookery once again, cooking in cold water, bringing your, your potatoes up to the boil. Bringing your potatoes up to the boil in cold water gets out the, uh, the starchiness out of the potatoes and the acrid uh, taste. We're just going to do a little uh, brunoise of, uh, of white onion. I like white onion because it gives a little sweetness as well. And then we're just going to saute those off a bit. And then we can uh, add those to our crushed potato, which we're going to add a little bit of uh, mixed uh, peppers to, which is white pepper, pink peppercorns and black peppercorns. We're going to saute and melt down the, uh, the onions a little bit in our little uh, saucepan over here. And then we're going to cook that in a bit of olive oil. So we've just got a bit of olive oil going on there. Going to pop the onions in now. And we can hear them sizzling away. We don't want to bring any colour onto them. Just going to sweat them down, make them translucent. Then we're going to pop them in a uh, little bowl. We're going to pop in the, pop in the potatoes because they're nearly cooked now as well. And then we're going to have the, uh, then we're going to have a bowl to cut our, uh, crush our potatoes up in. So potatoes, wonderful dish to go with, uh, wonderful dish to go with our fantastic braised beef short ribs that have been cooking uh, during the uh, during the afternoon. So the potatoes are just nicely done. So just bring them out of the water. A little bit of water inside the bowl as well that's on the potatoes is okay. And then we're just going to crush them down once the onions are cooked. We're going to season them up. And they're actually, that's going to be the base of what we're going to serve our lovely braised short ribs on. So I've cooked them quite well so that they'll They'll just crush nicely. We're not going to. We're going to leave the skin on. We're not going to. Um, we're not going to smash them. We're just going to crush them. So we can add a little bit of salt, a little bit of fresh ground salt to this one. Not forgetting about our onions in the back. We give that a bit of a toss off, just to keep that sweating down nicely. We've got a little bit of butter here, so we're going to chop some butter into the. Um, into the into the potatoes just to let that melt through and that's going to help moisten up the potatoes and give a lovely richness to the to the crushed potato we have got our black peppercorns in our pestle and mortar already ground up nice and ready we give them another little mix around so it's a mixture of white black and pink a nice good pinch of those beautiful peppercorns. We've got our butter just slowly melting away in there. We're sweating our onions in a touch of olive oil and it's always good just to use different types of, get used to using different types of onions so you can see what uh, what flavour profile each onion does. When I first come here to uh, the United Arab Emirates and I learned how to really cook curry uh, with uh, the Indian colleagues, so a couple of my Indian chefs, they told me how to, uh, how to cook a, a proper curry. And it was interesting to know that they didn't use the big white onions that we would use over in uh, Australia or over in Europe, for example, or the big brown onions. They use a very small red onion because they don't have so much water in them. And then they're able to caramelize them or really brown them down much better than, a, and it takes a shorter amount of time and not as much water comes out of the onion. And that onion also is a bit more pungent, a bit more spicy, so it helps the curry sauce as well. So I've sorted off our little onions here. They're looking fantastic. We're just giving them a little toss around. We've got our little fork here. And so we've just coloured them hardly any colour. They've turned translucent. We're just going to pop those into the pan as well. So that's hot. We've got the hot potatoes. We've got the hot onions, which is going to help melt the butter down. Then we just take our fork and we just 
crush the potatoes as you can see nice and simple give it a mix crush it down crush it down crush it down and then you've got this very simple nice garnish to actually use as a base when we plate up our our beautiful braised short ribs give that a good mix around and uh, leaving the skin on again no waste because we've cooked the cooked the potatoes in the skin and we're just going to crush those out we're going to move them around a little bit getting the the uh, butter to melt through those beautiful potatoes and we end up with a lovely little base for our crushed potato to go with our braised short ribs which are about to come out of the oven now so we've just taken the um, the braised short ribs out of the oven so it's nice and hot now I'm unwrapping this so I haven't checked it before I've left it in for over three and a half hours I'm hoping so I'm going to have a look under here myself I'm going to have a little look here just going to test these out they're looking absolutely gorgeous. Now I'm just going to pull this off. I'm not too sure if you can see in here, cameraman code, but we've got the lovely little short ribs. They're absolutely delicate. They're absolutely smelling sublime. My mouth is watering, honestly. So the three and a half hours at around one, at, the oven was hovering between 150 and 160 degrees C for three and a half hours. When we touch, I'm just going to use a little, I'm going to use a little tongs here. I'm not too sure if you can zoom in a little bit, cameraman code. Can you zoom in a little bit, make sure we're in focus. You can actually see how gorgeous these are. And we can see that the, the meat is tender by just poking them in a little bit. And what we will do, we're just going to let them sit and rest for a little bit before we take them out of the jus. So we've got, the, we've got them in, sitting in the juice. Just going to let them sit for a minute. Then I'm going to bring them out one by one. I'll just move around my board here. It's super hot, yeah? Anyway, we touch it with the edge of our fingers. There's a couple of things, a couple of more steps we have to do with our uh, ribs here. One, we've got to get them out of the... Uh, we're going to get them out of the, um, out of the jus. So now we're going to take our, our short ribs out of our braising pan. And we've got to be super gentle. There's a piece of garlic. Remember we spoke about the garlic? Now, what we should be seeing, we should be able to just pull this. Hopefully, if they're cooked nicely, the bones will just sort of pop out, yeah? There we go, just like that. Look at that, beautiful, yeah? Did you, did you get that cameraman code? Just pulling the bones away from the short rib, yeah? So you can take the bones out now. You could cut them up and leave them for people to do that themselves. Really up to you. If you want people to interact with your food, then you'd actually do that. You know, bring them to the table and let everyone pull their bone out, yeah, which is fun. And then we have, well, that one's already fallen off. So I'm just gonna bring out the last piece. Remember, we cut it up into two pieces. I'll stand this one up so we can have a look and then we'll just sort of tickle this around. And then we're going to lift him up because he's really hot. And let's watch this. Let's see if that just pulls out. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, winner. Absolutely gorgeous. Cool. I could just eat this right now. Not even waiting for the potatoes. I could just get into that right now. So we're going to leave this rest a little bit here. Yeah. We're going to let him rest. Then what we're going to do with the jus, we're going to strain the jus into a little pan and we're going to reduce him down. Yeah. Now I'm going to also make sure that this uh, gets to a nice consistency and then we're just going to naturally reduce the jus down. We're not going to add any roux or any thickening agent at all. If you wanted to, you could use a thickening agent, but the best way to get an intense flavour and a great flavour is just to keep reducing the jus down. Yeah. Of course, young chefs, you would make a brown stock first as your braising agent and then you could actually fortify this, uh, this stock with extra trimmings of beef fillet, ex which we had the trimmings of yesterday. If you've got leftover bits and pieces from your, from your butchery, then you would saute off your beef, add a little bit more milpois, and then really reduce down the, uh, and then pour in your, your stock from your braising liquid, and then you 
reduce your sauce right down but we also want it to be nice and flavorful and we also want it to be nice and uh, clean and crystal clear if we can get it a little bit clearer as well by straining it nicely so that's what we're going to do now so now we're just going to pass the the jus straight out of the container through a little sieve yeah if you've got muslin cloth even better but remember cooking at home we may not have everything that we have in a uh, in a professional kitchen but we just strain that through into our little pan and then we're going to start reducing it right down the jus is already flavored from the um, salt and the thyme and the other flavorings that we put into the into the braising liquid so once it's reduced then we're going to start to taste to make sure it's actually got enough salt and got it, all the flavors that we wanted to wanted to get from the the beef as well it's a lovely little um, jus that we've used it's it's been cooking for three and a half hours in the in the oven so the juices out of the the beef will have started to flavor this jus also so that's a great sauce to really complement our beautiful braised short ribs. So I've just finished, uh, just strained off all our jus. And then we're going to pop him onto the stove. And these uh, oven mitts are especially for Michael Stratmanis, old, old friend in South Australia. Hence I've got the South Australia food apron on. Michael, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're looking after yourself. Michael Stratmanis used to work with the Australian National Culinary Team. Great old friend. Grandfather as he's commonly known and always up for mischief. So he'll tell you a story about oven gloves if you're lucky one day. I'll bring these home to you, Michael, when I'm home next time, chef. Yeah. So we've popped, the, um, we've popped our jus back onto the stove. And what I'm going to do, because you've got quite a bit of fat in the, um, on, the, on the spare ribs, you've got quite a bit of fat that's come out into the, uh, into the, into the stock. So I want to just make sure that we skim off the excess uh, fat off the, top of our, uh, off the top of our jus. Make sure that we're just getting a nice jus left. If we were doing a consomme, for example, we would be uh, drawing a piece of... Uh, of uh, parchment paper across the top of the uh, of, across the top of the uh, finished consomme to remove the last remnants of uh, oil. Uh, I remember doing that in uh, as an apprentice, especially in college, and then in one of the hotels I worked with in, in Australia that we had to make sure that we uh, deglaze, but then also to remove the last remnants of the fat off the top of the stock. So we're just going to let that reduce down nicely. We're going to have it just sitting in the pot, reducing down, reducing down until it's nicely done. If you remember what we said at the, uh, at the beginning of the, of the braising, I put in some whole garlic. So I'm just going to use my hands here. I'm going to get me little tongs. And you see how the garlic has completely cooked? So I'm going to pop that inside with the potatoes. So when you eat that, that's gonna be yummy, yeah? Now, don't forget food waste, right? So what do we do with the stuff that's left inside the pan? So we've got the carrots, we've got the milpa, we've got some bones. What we should be doing, and what we will do, is that when we make our next batch of stock, we need to make a nage, yeah? And what we do is we're gonna put all these items here, including these lovely bones, back into the pan and then we're going to roast them off a bit then we're going to pop them into, a, into our nage and then you boil the last remnants of goodness out of all this parts of the milpois and the bones from the from the short ribs and then you've got zero food waste you've really taken the best care you can not to have any waste at all yeah with the garlic now in the potatoes, we just mix that through lightly. That'll just add a lovely little dimension to the flavor profile of the crushed potato. Remembering not to mix it, it's not, it's not whipped, it's not mashed potato, it's crushed, and they're ready. So we've got our sauce nicely reduced, we've skimmed off all our fat, so we've got a lovely, a lovely jus happening here. Absolutely gorgeous, it's coming nicely down it's just reducing down and we just keep reducing it all the way down if we wanted to make it a little bit richer we're at the final at the final part of 
just before we played, we could monte au beurre. My chef in England, Mick Mizzen, great chef, he used to monte au beurre all the sauce. So we had to put a little bit of butter, butter cubes into the jus at the last minute just to give it that extra shine and that beautiful richness of uh, fresh butter through our, through our, uh, through our, uh, through our sauces, yeah? Mick was, a, Mick was a great professional. What I've done here, just to show you, I've got a little bit of a little bit ready to go. As you can see, it's coating the spoon beautifully. It's nice and clear. It's got a beautiful shine on it. And it's absolutely gorgeous piece of jus. Of course, using a good stock, using good ingredients is key. Now, to show you how tender these are, after the three and a half hours of uh, oven and beef rib in perfect harmony, spoon and fork. Look how easy it just pulls away. Yeah, that's why the bones fell out. So I'm not even going to attempt to cut this. I reckon that this should be served as a family style affair and that you should help, each, each person should help themselves to one of these. So all I'm going to do is very simply, beautiful plate, my little crushed potatoes, going to pop them in the bowl, nothing fancy, no espuma, no, uh, no gels, no chemicals, just crushed potatoes, flavoured up with that little bit of, of extra garlic that we did. And then we bring our little beautiful, look at that, gorgeous, on top. And then we're just gonna finish it and nappe the sauce over the top. And the sauce is now reduced just enough to give a beautiful shine as we deliver over the top some beautiful, beautiful veal jus, which is made from the roasting and from the braising jus, and that gets over the top. We put that down all the way so the potatoes start to soak it up. We have a little bit more served on the side, ready for the people like me that like a little bit of extra sauce and for dipping into their their bread into their sauce. And there we have it, a lovely braised short rib, crushed potato, a real home style, family style, easy to prepare, wholesome dish. Enjoy.